Everyday life in Bondo Hospital. Patients hospitalized in the late stages of AIDS and doctors overwhelmed by the sheer volume of sick people they receive every day from the beaches. According to our data, most of the patients who come from the beach who are fishermen. Most of them, around 70% of them, usually test positive. Why is that? Mm. Okay, according to what we realize, it's because of the activities that go on in the beach. Every home is affected. You will hardly find any home that had never been affected by HIV virus. You will find that there are some homes that are left without the parents, children are left alone. You will find that there are some homes that the children are only left with the grandees. No parents. <laughs> Lake Victoria is home to one of Africa's biggest fishing industries and a population devastated by AIDS. Here the men man the boats, but the business is run by women. Competition between these women is fierce. Everything rests on the catch and whoever manages to get their hands on it. But an exploitative process of procurement has grown up around the industry, creating a system that has also played straight into the hands of the AIDS virus. It is called a Jaboya system and describes the relationship between the fishermen and the women who buy their fish. Frequently, this relationship is sexual. Women who offer sex to the fishermen stand a better chance of getting fish. Julia is one such jaboya. Her husband died of AIDS, leaving her without support and no alternative but to join the jaboya system. Leaving little room for trust. Julia is yet to tell her lover that she is HIV positive because the consequences would be catastrophic for her and her young family. And the sexual obligations of these women do not end with the fishermen. The fish must be transferred to market while it is still fresh and competition for space on the roof of the bus can be just as intense as getting hold of the fish in the first place. This woman is one of the fish vendors. These practices serve to create a network of sexual contacts that have allowed the virus to not only take hold in this community, but also to wreak havoc. Ndeda Island is one of the worst hit communities in the area.
From a 1997 population of 6,000, just 2,400 remain. Ignorance, by contrast, remains commonplace. Each morning, this woman comes down to the beach to help with the morning catch. And once the fish have been sold, she's on the lookout for a different catch. <laughs> And the impact of this fatalism is clear for all to see. Fifty meters away, the body of a man who has died of AIDS the previous night lies cold on the floor, while his fellow fishermen try to raise enough money to get the body to the mainland and the mortuary. All around the lake stand the ruined houses of AIDS victims, victims as much of culture as disease. In addition to the widespread practice of polygamy, with some men marrying as many as six wives, local culture dictates that when a man dies, a close member of his family should inherit his wife. Uh, this is the grave for my co-wife, who died in the year 2002. And this is the grave for my husband. He was uh, positive. Yeah, he, he had AIDS. And, uh, Later on, my co-wife also died, and the same thing, the same disease. Margaret's husband died in 1997, leaving her alone with six children. But she thanks her Christian faith for giving her the courage to resist the social pressure to be inherited by her husband's brother. And because me, myself, I'm saved, I decided not to be inherited. And you know, when you are not inherited, and uh, like uh, my community, they cannot like me because they think I'm going against their, their customary. But you can stand by yourself and say, you, you are a Christian, you cannot accept to be inherited. And that is what happened to myself. But my co-wife accepted to be inherited and maybe that is why she's no longer with us. Margaret now looks after not only her own children, but those of her co-wife as well. It is a fate shared by many of her neighbours, who often call on Margaret for support. Her husband is the one who inherited my co-wife. And later on, he also died. So, she's also a widow now. Margaret is herself HIV positive, and it is thanks to her enlightened attitude, as well as the antiretroviral drugs that she takes, that she is still alive. Everywhere there is evidence of the ignorance that prevails throughout much of the community. Mark Onyango is the assistant chief of Ndeda Island. So this is the home of the Mr. Jojo Sindo who died with the, his uh, wives. This one home, one house. And here are the children and the, uh, their grandmother. Here is Margareta Diambo Sindo with the, her grandchildren who left when the, the whole family died and the girl here is cooking for the, the children in the home, yes. No adult? No adult, no adult. Responsibility for this young family now falls on the shoulders of 14-year-old Beatrice, who since her parents died has been forced to drop in and out of school as she struggles to look after her siblings. Today, lunch for one must be shared by six.
Nutu a tuya, bas for cookie car, toneto, niece or mam, again. Nian or the to aid semi and god. Such a mock one in the cage, such a mock, a cat decadina, my beer at all a cat there so. A cow a chim, cow get one in the cage. When I look at an in the cage, can you come one mother pack one more girl mad? Beatrice tries to meet their needs with the little money she earns for smoking fish. But this puts her in daily contact with fishermen and leaves her vulnerable to the Jaboya system. Lazarus Ouma is an AIDS awareness campaigner who travels the beaches and islands trying to hammer home the message of prevention. But many people still deny the existence of HIV believing the disease to be a curse visited on those people who break customary law. Lazarus's message often falls on deaf ears, except for an occasional moment of humor. You cannot get a poor man struggling for a transport, going to bond or to and fro, simply for the test. Now, she or he will just stay here, not knowing the health status, simply because we are far away from the hospital. So they still go on doing their sexual immoralities without any preventive measures, because they think they are okay, okay. So the spread still goes on, because they are not aware. Indeed, the only time that most HIV-infected people make it from the beach to the nearby town of Bondo comes when they arrive at the mortuary. All these women have lost their husbands. All of them are HIV positive. Perhaps the only winners of this tragedy are the mortuary owners. This man is a nurse by trade, but is working after hours at the family mortuary because of the sheer number of bodies they are receiving. Okay, apparently we have 11 bodies, and most of the bodies that you are seeing here, they are people who have died of HIV AIDS. And day in, day out, people come here crying of this killer disease. It's terrible. It's creating a work in this community. Most of our people, you know, even the homes around, they are dying of this disease. If we don't get help or we find a proper way to curb this disaster, then I think this, the community is going to get distinct, to say the least. Many people here still believe AIDS is a curse, and they're right. More than 20 years after Lake Victoria was first hit with HIV, children still bury their parents. And these funerals look set to continue until the fishing community of Lake Victoria comes to realize that AIDS is a disease that can be prevented.